I'm not going to actually go through the presentation because it'll be recorded and you can see it later this afternoon. Um, but I just wanted to kind of click through to the part that was based on some conversations that we had during this lab week. Um, so the, the main part is kind of breaking down these kind of use cases of areas that we think IPFS could help a lot in the offline world and fleshing them out a little bit. Um, the three that we kind of solidified on were the school slash enterprise world where you have um, the school slash enterprise world we have many people who are making the same sorts of requests for the same sort of content so you have highly duplicate network traffic um, you also are mostly collaborating first with the people around you and only second trying to sync to the rest of the network or try to send async messages to people elsewhere. So you really want local first communication instead of local after it's synced very far away and then come back. Um, and so you're, you have you know, very small data pipes in these areas, but you have much higher device penetration than you used to in the past. Um, so these are things like all of these wonderful magical school apps that exist that are very rich and very wonderful however they're taking really long really long times to load and it's frustrating um, another use case was kind of this peer-to-peer -peer file transfer this is really popular in rural areas places with really slow low bandwidth or slow internet connection or intermittent access um, and this is a lot of Great, I'm going to share an individual file to the person next to me. Think like trying to pass a, a photo that you've just taken to someone next to you. We tend to text it to them, which goes very far away and then eventually gets back to them. Or we're like, oh, I, yeah, email, wait, how can I transfer? So it's, a, it's an unsolved problem, um, especially in places where you have expensive data connections. So there's a couple of apps that already exist starting to try and help with this, but you have to kind of purpose build different apps to solve what should be a really easy problem. And then finally, the, this kind of local social community, people where there's high density of people, they're all interested in some sort of locally relevant things. Maybe it's different topics, but um, you care about the people around you, you have, have similar characteristics. Um, and frequently right now, this will just completely overload um, the networks that we have where you're trying to um, access the same content, go over the same pipes, um, and yet, aren't able to function as, um, as a unit to, to work together. And so this is things like um, wanting to have mesh networks, wanting to have kind of local, um, this neighborly um, project that, that Google created, Fire Chat was another thing that kind of came up to try and do local communications during protests, like this one in Hong Kong, um, Nextdoor, which is a, a local app. Um, so that's kind of some of the stuff that's been happening. I'll skip to the part where, where I talk about kind of the cool IPFS stuff. Um, so some of the stuff that we could do in IPFS in particular for these different cases um, are for the school enterprise users, we could just dedupe content. Great, you've already fetched this once into the network. Let's do local routing. Let's try and figure out which of your peers could serve that content to you instead of going back out and requesting it again. Um, we could also sync edits locally first where we could broadcast out the edits we're doing to the people who are interested in a topic instead of having to have you know, some external provider intermediate that. Um, and then we could pre-cache content on our local network that was really interesting to people and have people look it up locally first um, before, say, going to the external network if they wanted to find like a fresher version or something like that. For peer-to-peer -peer file transfers, this, you know, just making it work. Peer-to-peer -peer would be really cool. Point-to-point -point would also be really, really interesting where we could use the connections we have through our network to kind of relay content from individual to the place they're, um, they're trying to transfer stuff. Um, also opportunistic content distribution. This is kind of pub sub ish subscribing to a topic that you're interested in and as you pass through a network, picking up relevant, interesting um, content that it relates to that topic. Um, same, you know, providing relevant content to people um, who are looking for it. Um, and then also this creates potentials for an incentive market around data careers where you're bringing the content on a certain topic to people who are looking for it and um, actually kind of hopping this gap in the network in order to, to bring them the content that they're looking for. Um, and finally, the local social. This is you know trying to have resilient connections when the network's overloaded. Um, also really interesting for like local gaming or highly responsive connections. Um, and this could be things like you know when, when our computers are literally networked with each other, they're going to have a faster connection than if we ship all of the data out over our um, single Wi-Fi connection and then take it all back. 
Um, so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing next, which is starting up more of a, a discussion around this inside of IPFS, doing some research to understand really more clearly what the problems are, and then connecting with others, and um, talk about a little bit what the challenges are. There's a number that we would have to work on a good bit in order to um, like really make these you know, super smooth and delightful and perfect, and we're really excited to start pushing on some of that stuff. Um, definitely there's some work around mobile to improve, okay, decrease our RAM and battery and storage requirements, to improve our performance, to, to do this kind of peer discovery and um, the pub sub channels to, to be able to subscribe to this stuff. And then just really the big thing here on top of that, and that's kind of our request to our network and our partners, is like building stuff on top of this that is super smooth and easy to adopt and really fits those, the set of expectations. It's definitely not a solved problem to figure out how to build applications for the offline world that are delightful and easy and intuitive for all of these um, new internet users. And so that's kind of, we need to build the underlying technology that really supports it well. We're, pretty far already, but um, there's some additional gaps that we need to fill, and then working with others to build these delightful purpose-built gaps on top. Yeah, and you can get involved, and then we're going to make it happen.